Hello, welcome to another morphology class, morpho syntax class. Okay, we're going to cover still cover unit three, and we're going to cover pronouns this time, right? So, what does the manual say about pronouns? That they are a major, major class, major class subclass of nouns. So, nouns and pronouns are totally related. Uh, we call them a subclass of nouns because they can sometimes replace a noun in a noun in a sentence. Okay, so instead of, of saying elephants are big, we can say they are big. They pronoun they replaces elephant. When they refer to people, we call them personal pronouns. Which are the personal pronouns? First person, I, and we. First person singular, I, first person plural, we. Then we have second person, you, and third person singular, he, she, it. First person plural, they. Covered all uh, pronouns. But you will see that there are other types of pronouns. So we need to cover these as well. Look at the other time. The personal ones are here, and then we have the object pronoun, which usually, normally, most of the time, 99% of the time, come after the verb. For example, I told you to go there. So you is not a personal pronoun, although morphologically speaking, it's identical, but this is considered or classified as an object pronoun. Then we have possessive ones. Look at the examples. Mine, yours, his, hers, etc., etc. Look at the example here. It says the white car is mine. Mine is not an object pronoun because it comes after the verb is. It's a possessive pronoun because the meaning that the word carries indicates possession. Then we have reflexive ones. Reflexive ones are easy to spot because they finish with the suffix self in singular form and selves in plural form. So super easy to uh, spot. Look at the example. He injured himself playing football. Himself is a reflexive pronoun. Then we have reciprocal ones. Reciprocal ones imply two. Reciprocal implies two. So each other or one another imply two people. They really hate each other. What <laughs> a sentence for an example. Then we have relative pronouns. Relative pronouns are the ones which introduce a, um, a clause in a sentence. A sentence within a sentence. Okay? So look at this, for example. It says, the book that you gave me was really boring. The main sentence of this uh, in this text is the book is was really boring that is the main sentence now we have a clause an extra information that is introduced by a relative pronoun that that you gave me that's extra yes it's not really relevant for the idea of the book being boring okay so this uh, these um, relative pronouns are the ones that introduce another sentence within the main sentence. Okay? Relative pronouns are also called complementizers. We will see that later when we cover syntax. Okay? There is a difficulty. The, this uh, relative pronoun that is exactly the same, identical in morphology, as the demonstrative that. So how can we tell the difference between the relative that and the demonstrative that? Well, you need to know that demonstratives always point, they point to a place. This, that, those, these, etc. Okay? They are always pointing, while relative pronouns, they don't point. 
So if you say this is a new car, you can actually touch the car. This is a car. Yes, a new car. So you need to, to tell the difference or to spot the difference. Then we have interrogative uh, pronouns. Who, what, why, etc., etc. Be very, very, very careful with these because the word, the interrogative pronoun who, for example, is identical to the relative pronoun who. What should we know? What should we do then if we find this? If I, the teacher, ask you to classify pronouns, for example. Well, you need to distinguish between the functions. Is this word introducing a new sentence? Or is this a question? What did he say to you? So interrogative ones always are, are always question forms. Finally, we have the indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns are called indefinite because nobody knows. Nobody knows. Yeah. Anything on when you say anybody or anybody or nobody, etc., you don't know who the person is. You just say, yes. You, you cannot uh, name the person, okay? If you say something, you could name the thing, but the, the word itself, something, does not name anything. That's why they are called indefinite. And look at the list of indefinite pronoun okay so in the sentence there's something in my shoe the word something is a pronoun an indefinite pronoun clear we have many types of pronouns then okay then you need to do the exercise let's do the first one first together and then you'll do the, the rest the first one says let's contact one another once we've made some progress progress one another has been Highlighted. One another is an example of, yes, you are right, reciprocal. So you need to color this or highlight this uh, F, letter F, to, to say that uh, the pronoun is reciprocal. Okay, can you please do the rest of the exercise? Thank you. For you to practice, right? Okay, let's continue. It says, case and number distinctions do not apply to all pronoun types. So we're not going to talk a lot about case, but we will talk about number distinctions. Remember when it says number, it has nothing to do with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It has to do with plural or singular form. It says, in fact, they apply only to personal pronouns. So we have personal pronoun I. And we, I is singular, we is plural. Possessive pronouns, my and uh, my, my is singular and their is plural. Reflexive pronouns, for example, myself and ourselves. So there are number differences. It is only in these types, too, that gender differences are shown. Gender is very rare to show as a suffix or as a morphological form in English. So he, she shows gender because we know that he is male and she is female. Possessives also show gender because we have his and hers. And reflexive also show gender because we have himself, herself. Then it says, to all, to all, uh, all other types are unvarying, unvarying, unvarying in their form. Unvarying in their form. Okay? They don't change, they don't vary. Let me move here. Many of the pronouns listed above also belong to another word class, the class of determiners. Uh oh. So here there we have an overlapping, an overlapping of classes, of word categories, of lexical categories. We have pronoun and we have determiner. Which one is which one? So let's see the rule then. It says, rule because we're dealing with grammar. It says, 
They are pronouns. They are classified. Let me write classified here. They are classified as pronouns when they occur independently. That is, without a noun following them. This is super, super important. I need you to know to master this. As in, this is a new car. Here, the word this is a, um, a pronoun. Yes, <laughs> it, it is a pronoun. And this pronoun is alone. It does not, it occurs independently. Okay? Why? Because there is no noun after it. There is a, a verb here, not a noun. So, because of that, this is considered a pronoun. Okay? A demonstrative pronoun. Then it says, but when a noun follows them, very important, they are classified as determiners. They are classified as determinants. As in this car, look at this. Look at the sequence. We have a demonstrative pronoun here, and we have a noun here. This, then, is not classified or considered to be a pronoun. It is considered to be a determinant. Okay. Clear. If you have questions about this, please write to me. Then it says, a major difference between pronouns and nouns generally is that pronouns do not take the. They do not take the word the or, or a uh, and before them. Okay, so how is that? Let me, let me show you an example. Uh, pronoun. A, a personal pronoun is... Uh, he. This is a personal pronoun. If you don't find English examples of this sequence, the he or a he. Grammatically speaking, because when we when people talk, we do say things like that. For example, I have a new teacher, says my son, and I I ask, is it a he or a she? Okay, a he or a she, like this, okay, but in grammar that is not allowed, okay. Further, pronouns do not take adjectives before them, okay, this is super important as well, they do not take adjectives before, before them, okay, except in restricted constructions involving some indefinite pronouns, for example, a little something, I brought you a little something. There, you can find little, an adjective, and something, a pronoun. A certain someone. Certain, an adjective, and someone, an, an indefinite pronoun. Okay. While the class of nouns as a whole is an open class, and this is important as well, open class category, the subclass of pronouns is, belongs to the closed class category. Okay. So... We need to consider this, take this into account. That's it regarding English pronouns. Uh, the, the, the second step regarding pronouns is to compare them with Spanish ones. So that will be the next step. See you soon then. Goodbye.